In this lesson, I will explain in detail the settings that tell Solid how to interpret the structure of an SFM file. There will be a lot of information, and for now I'm just explaining it. I'm not really working with it. There will be later lessons where we work with it, and it may take until those other lessons before this starts to sink in. But I wanted to go through it systematically to get all the information out there. As we mentioned in earlier lessons, the under column is the one that holds the key to how Solid, what Solid thinks the structure of this file is. So let's pick a field marker and look at it. The LX field is the top of the hierarchy, and it gets this special code entry. We're telling it that the marker over it is entry, or that it's, it's the entry marker. Now, let's look at another one. The LC is the citation form. So if we want to see the settings, we need to click on this code that's in the under column. And that opens up a dialog box, and then we be can begin to see what the settings are. The most important part of this settings box is this area here that tells what the, the parent marker is. Now this marker can occur under LX and over here um, it's trying to tell us in prose under LX LC can occur and it's telling us more details about it but if you can't remember which marker you're looking at um, you can look in the left pane to see what's highlighted, and you can look right here to see which marker it says there. So LC is at the entry level, and its parent marker is the LX. Now here it wants to know how many times it can occur, or what the, the properties are of, of how it can occur. And here the option for once is ticked, because there should only be one citation form. Now we'll get into the other options in a bit. Um, but one thing I want to say about these options is that when I'm first starting out setting up uh, the settings for a, a new SFM file in Solid, I try to be as conservative as possible. And once is the most conservative option for this choice. And so I recommend starting out with conservative choices first. And if you find that you need to loosen the constraints up, then do that later after you find out what's in the data. But I like to choose once if I can, unless I'm absolutely certain that I need one of the other ones. Now, there are other fields. Um, this one here asks what to do if there's no parent. If it sees an LC field and it doesn't have LX above it, then what should it do? And here it's saying that it should report an error. And later we'll see other options for that. The summary tells you about the little code that showed up in the under column. And it basically tells you two things, or at least this one does. The first part is the marker that is its parent. So that should be pretty straightforward. And then the second one is a special code that represents what boxes you ticked up here. So the one is what shows up if you ticked once. And then there's a comment field. And the first thing in the comments field tells you the, the name of the field in flex. And so here it's saying citation form. And then it's telling you, does this field occur in flex? And is there anything special about how to use it? So it's saying, yes, it does occur in flex. But you should use SEC as a marker if the citation form is occurring in a subentry. So it's giving you special caveats that will come into play when you get around to doing the flex import. Now up here there are two tabs, one for settings and one for export, and we're not even going to look at the export tab at all because those exports are not reliable. Um, there is useful information there, but we won't go into that in this lesson. And we will also ignore the part about the data being marked for Unicode and the writing system. We're not going to do anything with that. So the most important thing here is what is the parent marker and how many times does it occur and what do you do if there's no parent? So that's all I'm going to do for the LC, but let's choose another marker. 
Now I want to look at SN. So SN is usually the sense marker. Now in this particular project, there are not many sense numbers. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, when setting up a project, one of the most important things you need to think about is what's the relationship between PS and SN. Which one is above the other one, and can there be more than one under the other one? Now, in the default settings in Solid, it assumes that PS is higher than SN. Here we're saying that SN is a child of PS. It is saying that it can occur only once. So some SFM files might have a PS for noun and then a couple senses under that and then a PS for verb and a few senses under that. For now, we're just assuming that it's a one-to-one -one map. Um, you could change it if it was the other way, but there will be more details related to that. Right now, this is just telling us that there's one PS and one SN. Now there's this additional box that says must occur. So this is saying that the SN must occur under a PS. Now this can be a bit confusing because what Solid's going to do is when it sees a PS, then it's going to see is there an SN. And if there isn't, then it's the PS that will look like it has the error because how do you highlight a field that isn't there? But so this is useful for certain fields. Um, there are not many fields that have this ticked, but there's a few for which you really do want to tick this box. And in this case, if we're claiming that every PS needs an SN, then we definitely want this ticked. So again, we'll report an error if there's an SN but no PS over it. The summary, so part of it looks familiar. The parent is the PS, and it can only occur once, but now we have this little star. And so in trying to interpret these codes, you can think about, okay, what's different in this one from the previous ones that I've set? The main thing that's different is this must occur box. And so that's what the star means. You can use your powers of deduction to figure that out. And you can test it. If I untick the box, now the star goes away. And then if I tick the box, then the star comes back. Now you don't have to memorize this but eventually it will start to make sense. And then under the comments, it's telling us that this is for the sense number, and then it says, recommend always using it even if empty. That's because in some SFM files, there may just be a sense marker, but it won't say sense one or sense two or sense three. That's okay, solid is not looking at contents. It's not testing whether you have the right sense numbers it's just looking at the markers and what's the parent of the marker, what's the child of the marker. Um, there are some differences between how Flex handles sense markers and how Solid does. But in part of that is because there are different goals. In Solid, we're looking for every last little error. And if we don't have a single marker at the top of the sense, then it makes it really hard to find a bunch of the other errors. And so there's good reasons to need a single parent marker for the sense in solid, even though we don't actually need it in flex. And we'll talk more about that later. So this is what the settings for the SN look like. The parent is the PS, it occurs only once, and it must occur. I will close that. Now I want to look at the GE. So I found the GE marker, and I will click on the little code in the under column. Now for this, it occurs under a sense. It can only occur once. We don't want more than one um, gloss under a sense, because in flex, if there were two GE fields under the SN, it would start a new sense at the second one. And so in solid, we want to test. If there's ever a case where there's two GE under one sense, then we want to find it so that we can insert a sense marker ourselves and we can look at all the other fields and make sure that they're going in the right place. So this is quite important. Um, it can only occur once. 
Now, if there's no parent, we're doing something different. In the past, we chose the option for report error, but now we want to infer the SN. And if we look over here in the pane that shows us the record, we see the SN marker, but there's this plus after the backslash. What that means is that this is not actually a real marker yet. It's a marker that SOLID has inferred. It's suggesting that it should be there. Now later on, if we're happy with those, there is a way that we can turn it into a real marker. But for now, it's not really in the data file. It's just um, an illusion for us. It's a suggestion. Um, but this can be really helpful. OK, let me go back to my dialog. I'm still on GE. OK, so I've said I want to infer SN. The next thing I want to look at is the summary. So again, we still have our familiar parent marker and the number of times. But now this is the part that's new. This is what's new. And the only thing that's different on this one compared to what we've done for other markers is that we've said we want to infer an SN. So this is the code that says I'm inferring a marker. Now, if it's reporting an error, this part will be blank. If it's inferring, this part will be filled in. And again, it looks pretty cryptic right now, um, but there's only two choices for this part of the marker. So eventually, that will sink in again. And then the comments tell it's the gloss in English and that Flex uses it, but in Flex, it's used primarily for the interlinear, not so much for the dictionary. So that's the GE marker. OK, now I want to look at the PS marker. I will click on the codes in the under column. And this time, there are actually two markers in the marker field of what its parent can be. And that's, so keep in mind that in this setup, in this default setup, PS is actually the marker for the beginning of a sense, and then there will be a sense number immediately after it. So both main entries and sub-entries can have senses. So it's saying that SE, the sub-entry marker, is allowed to have a PS under it. And so that is good. That is true. That's normally the way things work. Um, so in solid, it's OK to have more than one parent. Now, if you were doing an import into Flex, and if you needed to do something fancy like promoting sub-entries, if you had sub-entries of senses, then you would want to be sure that whatever marker indicated the sense inside the subentry was a different marker from the LX. Now, not many databases have subentries of senses. So for now, we're just going to leave it like this. But it is rare that you would want to have a marker have two parents. For the most part, you really do want only one parent marker here. But in this case, it's OK. And in both of them, it can occur more than once. So for instance, under the main entry, you want to be able to have more than one sense, right? The PS marks the beginning of the sense. You definitely want to have more than one. So we don't have the once box ticked this time. We have one or more times together. Now what that means is that if you have more than one sense, nothing else can come in between them, nothing at the entry level. Now, it can have children. Under this, the PS marker, there will be the SN, and that will have other markers under it. So the children are fine. But in terms of siblings, things at the same level, at the entry level, there shouldn't be any other entry level fields between them. So for instance, you wouldn't want a PS, and then an LC, and then another PS. They need to be right next to each other. Now, there are some markers that do allow siblings to be interspersed, and we'll get to that in a minute. But again, as I said before, I like to be as conservative as possible. And so the option one or more times together is more conservative than one or more times with siblings that can be interspersed. So if at all possible, you know, if, if at all possible, click once. But if you know there can be more than one of them, then tick one or more times together. And only as a last resort, when you're absolutely sure it's OK, do you tick the third box. If there's no parent, we're still reporting an error. It's better not to infer 
Um, the most conservative thing is to not infer a marker. You only want to do that when you realize that you actually need to. And then in the summary, it tells you the parent marker, and so this two means one or more times together, and in a bit we'll show you what it looks like if it's one or more times with things in between. But for now, the two represents that. And then because it has two parents, both parents are showing here. And the number of occurrences can be set independently for each parent. And so for both of these parents, it can occur more than once. And then in the comments, there's a lot of information. I won't go into that right now. So that's the PS field. Now one more I want to look at is the RE. So this RE, um, we have said that it's at the sense level and that it can occur more than once. See, we're beginning to understand what these little codes mean. Um, and over here on the right, we are seeing some REs. Again, when I clicked on this, it acted like a filter and it brought up a record that has RE in it. Um, now, these are parsing OK, but down here in my error filter, I see this, and I noticed that there were some RE that could not be placed. Later on, we'll get to how to deal with the error filters systematically, but for now, I just want to pick out this one message. So if I click on this, then it's showing me only the REs that couldn't be placed. If I click on the RE up here, it would show me all 278 occurrences of them. If I click on it down here, there are 17 that couldn't be placed, and it takes me to the first record with one that couldn't be placed. And so when you have an error like this, you need to look over here and see what's going on. Um, one of the things that the, is that there's more than one of them. Now that's okay because the comment for it does tell us that we need to use a separate marker each time there's a new reversal. We can't combine all the reversals together in one field. But notice we have our E, our E, our E, and then there's a DE, and then we have our E, and then there's an RN in the national language, and then we have a few more REs. Now, technically it is okay if the REs have other things interspersed. And actually, it's quite common to have RE and then RN, and to have it in pairs, RE, RN, RE, RN. And so this is one of those markers where it is OK to have other things interspersed, that you might think of the sense as a bucket, and there can be several fields that are loose in there, and they don't have to be in any specific order. They're all siblings of each other, and it doesn't matter the order. And for the REs, other things can come in between them. And so the reason that this is red, um, we can hover and see what the problem description is. The problem description is not terribly helpful. It says the marker RE could not be placed in the structure and nothing could be inferred. Um, it just means it couldn't figure out what parent could be over it. We didn't tell it to infer something. So it's not terribly helpful, so you need to get accustomed to what kinds of things happen and just develop an intuition. So um, let me go ahead and open up the, the settings for RE. And we can see we've told it that it can be one or more times together. Now, if we look over here, they are not together. They are occurring one or more times. That is true, but they're not together. And if it was a marker where you wanted them to be together, then you would want to change the data. In this case, I've decided it really is OK if they're not together. And so this is a case where I can tick this other box. One or more times and siblings can be interspersed. Now when we look at our summary, we see this other code, the two dot dot two. And so that's the, the symbol for one or more times and other things might be in between it. And you don't have to memorize it, but pretty soon it might sink in because there's only three options here, and if you're trying to figure out which of these three options does it probably mean, that's the one it's more likely to mean. That doesn't look like together. So let me click close, 
and accept that, but this is still showing the old structure according to the old settings. So first I'm gonna click Save. I like to click Save when I change things. Sometimes when you click Save, it will refresh over here. Now in this case, it didn't. If you want to see what the structure looks like with the new setting, now I will click the Recheck button. Now, okay, it went away from that record. It took me back to the first record of the database. I meant to pay attention to what the LX form was. I happened to remember that it was a lot. I meant to have you look for it also. Now I want to find a record with a lot in the Lexeme form. I could just search for a lot, but that might be anywhere. So I'm gonna be more specific. I'm gonna type the LX and the space. I'm not gonna put the backslash because um, it can get confusing whether you need one or two or whether it's an escape character. I just want the sequence LX followed by a lot. Um, so I will click on the find button and it took me to that record. And so now here we see there are several REs in a row and then the DE and the RE, RN, RE. And so none of this is red anymore. There are other things with colors, but this particular section does not have any errors in it. And if I look down here in my error filters, RE is not up here in the top anymore like it used to be. And if I scroll down, I can get to the end of the markers that could not be placed and there is no RE there. So that fixed it. So sometimes when there's a problem, you fix the data. Other times when there's a problem, you fix the settings. And the process of use, using solid is kind of an iterative process where you do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you try things and you um, keep refining your settings until you get closer to, to something that really describes the structure of the database. So that is a summary of the different kinds of settings that can be in this field that is, comes in the under column. In later lessons, we will apply them and hopefully it will sink in more. We'll go systematically um, through how do you decide which of these error messages do you tackle first. So that's it for the settings detail. Thank you.